You're listening to The Dangerous Mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. No excuses, no BS, no pants. Oh yeah, we're going to listen to some different op amps today. Welcome back to the Microphone Playboy Podcast. How you doing? So there's an op amp party going on today. So get loose, hang out, and enjoy. What you're listening to right now is the BCM-104, and it's going through the DIYRE, DIYRecordingEquipment.com, CP5 preamp, 500 series CP5 preamp that I, that I built on camera. And in addition, if that weren't cool enough, inside the CP5 is a color module, the DOA color board, discrete op amp board which gives you the ability to blend in the sound of an op amp. Now, what are op amps, you ask? Good question. So the op amp is a really crucial part of a microphone preamp circuit because what it does is it amplifies the weak input of your microphone and it turns that signal into a level suitable for further processing through the circuit. Now, their primary function is to boost that low-level signal. But it's also uh, capable of tonal shaping because it depends upon the amount of harmonic distortion or, you know, warmth that it may add to your signal. Uh, the frequency response of your signal, it could tailor your frequency response. Some of them, like the RED25 op amp that is currently in the CP5 right now that you're listening to, will emphasize the mid-range. And also op amps, they, they basically tailor how your preamp uh, handles transients. So transients, you know, are the sharp, short bursts of sound. Like when, you know, like when drum, a drum hit, right? That's a, that's a sharp onset of sound. And an op amp like the RED25 will enhance the punch and the snap of that transient response. So it feels punchy. And op amps will also influence the uh, preamp's headroom, which is the maximum amount of signal that the preamp can handle before it goes into distortion. So today, along with the RED25 op amp that is in here right now, I am going to demo the AM10 op amp through the CP5. So let's first talk about this RED25. Now, this RED25 is basically... A, uh, it's based on the design of a classic API op amp, the API 2520, which is the op amp found in the API console. It's a punchy, aggressive sound, very forward mid-range, and it has a tight low end. So by, by kind of de-emphasizing the low end and kind of tightening up where the low end terminates or where you feel it terminates, it adds more presence to the mid-range. And then it also adds a little bit of an edge to the sound because, again, the, the transient response is very snappy with this. So it gives it that very immediate, uh, a muscular sound, you know, that API, very punchy forward sound. You know, a lot of times uh, when I, I'm thinking in my mind, like, what that API sound is, I think, I think of really, like, the, uh, the classic Journey records because I believe they were all recorded on an API. I know they were all recorded on API console. So that kind of really punchy American rock sound, that's like an API sound. And that I think really works very well for voiceover and, you know, nice forward, mid forward sound, a little bit of muscle on it, snappy transients, right? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good combination. And what you're hearing right now is uh, the op amp through the CP5 as set at 50%, set straight up at 12 o'clock. Because I think when you get above that, you start to get a little bit more distortion, which, you know, some people may like for their musical projects, but it doesn't really work for voiceover unless you're aiming for a special effect, like someone who is, uh, I don't know, uh, being fried by an electrical cable or something like that, something terrible. If something terrible happening to you, then you need distortion on your voice. So let's, go, let's move on to the AM10. All right, so this is the AM10. And, you know, again, these, these may be subtle differences to some of you. But overall, right, what you're hearing here, the AM10, uh, this sound really kind of a little bit more warmth. Um, I think because 
I think the uh, the slew rate, the transient response on the AM10 is a little bit slower. So it really has a, a more of a colored vintage tone. You know, it's a little bit punchy, but it's a little bit fatter. Um, so overall, right, I think that uh, you're hearing a smoothing of transients. Um, it's a little bit, it's a rounder sound overall. Uh, it's adding, you know, it's adding, it's adding some body to the sound, uh, more body than the, the API style had. Uh, this is a, this is a great choice for voiceover, but I think it's not really a choice for commercial voiceover. I think, you know, audiobook, uh, narrative reads, you know, really adding really that nice roundness to it. And what's cool is, okay, so this version of the AM10, this came from Cappy Electronics. And um, what they've done is they, they have a bunch of kits that emulate, um, that are recreations of other uh, op amps. And while these op amps, these older, other, different op amps, they've been adapted to fit in the API style, which is super cool because it allows you to do stuff like this, like swap in op amps to get different tones in, in your preamps. So the preamps that are, are capable of doing that. Even like I think the Warm Audio Tone Beast, I think that has uh, API style op amps in it, so you could switch those out. I think overall, you could really call this a more Neve-ish sound, more, of, more, more in line with a 1073, really. You know, it has, it has very similar characteristics to that. Uh, the, ten, the vintage uh, sound of a 1073. So if you want to get more of a Neve sound, out of your preamp, I think that the AM10 is a great choice. Now, at Cappy, they do sell these op amps already built, um, but I, I bought them as kits. And if you, if you saw the video of me making the, <laughs> the DOA board and building the Red 25, and the Red 25 was a very easy op amp to build. There were only like a, you know, a, few, a couple of parts that you had to put in. It, what, like 10 parts total <laughs> on the op amp? Not even that, I don't know. But like the 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 cappy kits for the for the AM10 and the OR10, there's like 15, 16 little uh, components that all have to go, and a, a ton of transistors. More than that, I think there, there there are a lot of parts on it, and it's a board that's really tiny. So it was op amps by far. I'm never going to build another op amp again because they were so difficult to build. And I a couple of them, I bricked a couple of those kits. Um, and the kits aren't, aren't expensive. They're like 20 bucks. But still, I, I think I screwed up a couple of them because, the, the, you know, they're, they're really tight builds. Um, but, you know, when you finish one and you build it and you hear the sound of it, you're like, OK, this is worth it. This is worth all the pain and suffering. So this is the AM10. And overall, I think that you're getting a nice uh, warm and musical sound out of this as opposed to the punchy and more aggressive sound of the Red 25. All right, back on the Red 25. So uh, what are the differences between them? Okay, the Red 25, the API style. Uh, and, you know, within the realm of API style op amps, there are a number of different companies that make them. There are a number of different uh, tonal, subtle, different flavors within that realm. But overall, the API style is punchy and forward. So uh, aggressive. Very forward mid-range, uh, tight low end, uh, presence, a little edge to the sound. Um, you know, I really, again, is a great sound for drums, for guitars, and I think a really great sound for voiceover, for especially the stuff I do. Um, and, you know, also, yes, the, uh, the setting on the Cappy, or the Cappy, the DIY RACP5 is set at 50%. So these are all demonstrating my use cases, how I would use them, and how I would, how I would suggest you may use them for voiceover. You know, I'm not driving the op amp too hard because I don't want that sound. I just, I want enough of that tone added in to add another flavor if I want to turn on the color, the color switch. So, you know, punchy, aggressive, pretty cool, right? Um, the AM10. Really more of a vintage sound, warm, uh, punchy in the punchy in a lower, like really lows and low mids, so like really where they bridge. It's more punchy down there. Um, harmonic rich, more harmonics, I think overall. Uh, adding body, uh, smoother top end. 
uh, smoother transients overall, whereas the, the API style has more aggressive, uh, really punchy transients. The AM10 did a little bit more smooth, you know, a little bit more musical. And they say musical. Musical is the term that they use when it does kind of smooth stuff out a little bit to hide to, to hide a little bit of the subtle maybe mistakes or, you know, whatever. But it, it all works. But it sounds good. Um, would the AM10 be good for voiceover work? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, but if you need that warmer, larger sound, it's not, it's not a punchy, aggressive sound that you would use for like commercial work, for promo work. So what do you think? Which one are you using now? Which one would you like to use? Let me know in the comments. I want to know what you're thinking. All right. Well, thank you for attending the Op Amp Party. <laughs> and uh, you know what to do. Leave a comment. Until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black.